Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Today I'd like to speak to you about robots. This is because this morning I picked up the newspaper and I came across an article about Google and its plans to start using walking robots. Then there was another article I came across recently which spoke about how Amazon is planning to start using flying robots at some point in the future. Then I stopped to think of different movies I had seen which have robots in or which use ro the idea of robots as the main topic. And I thought of Blade Runner, of course, from 1982. Then, of course, there's also iRobot, which was released in 2004. There are also many different books and other works of fiction which discuss robots. In these works of fiction, you'll often find that robots are depicted as being similar in appearance to us human beings, and they may also be depicted as being similar in intelligence to us as well. These um, works of fiction often consider the wide range of different scenarios that could arise in the future if technology develops further and if robots become more advanced. Most of these works of fiction consider a point in time in the future when robots may indeed become cleverer than us or when they are maybe more able than us human beings. This means that one day we may indeed face the situation of robots becoming the masters of us as opposed to the other way around. However, robots have actually existed for a number of decades and we've used them for a number of different purposes. For example, in industry we use robots regularly for complex or repetitive tasks. Often we try to uh, make sure that we have a robot available to carry out tasks which are uh, to be done in places which are too dangerous for human beings to get to. And, of course, just think about all of the many automated gadgets that can be found on any spacecraft. However, maybe not all of these robots actually fit the idea, the conventional idea of robots which is put forward in science fiction. But they do indeed have many characteristics which are similar to those of human beings. Some of them may mimic the way we move and some of them may have artificial intelligence which almost imitates human intelligence. And uh, today if we want to see a robot in action all we actually have to do is to find the nearest car factory and organise a visit. So robots are around us and they can be easily found. But these robots that we have today don't actually look like us much in terms of their appearance. Or not many of them do. But now I'd like to tell you about an attempt to create a robot which indeed does look very similar to hum us human beings. In order to do this I'll have to tell you the story of a friend of mine from Spain. His name is Edu. Now, Edu and I studied at the same university in the United Kingdom. I, of course, as you may have guessed, was studying a course in languages. So this meant that I spent a lot of time watching foreign television channels. I read novels in other languages and I went to bars to practice my languages, my spoken language with the Erasmus students who were at my university. And all the while, Edu was sitting at home in his room carrying out difficult programming tasks because he was studying computing. He had to grapple with technical ideas whilst I was out having fun. Then after university, we both continued in our respective fields and we ended up in different places. 
I, of course, ended up in Brussels, where I work as an interpreter and translator. And Edu, on the other hand, is now working in Japan, where he programs robots. Now, of course, Brussels and Japan are very uh, far away from each other. So it's been difficult in recent years to catch up with Edu and to know what he's up to these days. But just recently in December, Edu came on a visit to Europe and he was here in order to develop, a, in order to deliver a robot to a university. So this was a chance for Edu and I to finally catch up. Edu told me about his work and what he had to say was absolutely fascinating. He, as a matter of fact, tells a lot of people about the work he does. He is becoming maybe a minor celebrity, we could say. He has a blog on the website of a very well-known Spanish newspaper, El País, and he has been interviewed by a Spanish radio station, which you might have heard of, which is called Cadena Ser. Um, so what does Edu actually do? Well, he works for a Japanese university professor who is known around the world. This professor's name is Hiroshi Ishiguro. Now, you might not have heard of this name before, but chances are that you have actually seen one of his robots on TV or um, in the news somewhere. So this professor is an expert in his field, and uh, this means that he has to travel around the world in order to share his expertise with others. But after some time, he grew weary of traveling, and he decided that he would like to actually create a robot which could do the traveling for him. So he decided to design a robot which would actually be identical to himself. And now, indeed, this professor does give conferences around the world without having to set foot in another country. And his, this is all thanks to his robot. And this is a robot which looks almost identical to the professor himself. If you see a picture of both of them sitting next to each other, they look like twins. They speak in a very similar fashion, they have the same gestures and even the same voice. The professor's aim in all of this was to make communication easier by allowing robots to represent human beings. And it was hoped that in this way, um, not only could international conferences be carried out, be organized in an easier fashion, but also people who are lonely might be able to feel the company of another human being through a robot. Now, I'm not sure if this is uh, really true, whether a lonely person would actually feel consoled by a robot, but this is nevertheless one of the claims. My friend Edu actually has his own robot as well. And this robot represents him in conferences that he has to give around the world. Although it's not quite as developed as the professor's robot and it doesn't have the f facial features that Edu has. So, as with any form of technology, despite the benefits that robots can bring, there are always concerns that arise and... Um, there are always different aspects that we might be worried about and that we might have to consider um, with any new form of technology. One particular aspect is the fact that the professor who developed this robot that imitates himself ages, whereas the robot itself does not age. It has a face made of silicon which does not change over time. Now, to my surprise, Edu told me something very special about this particular aspect. He said that the professor had to, after some time, consider how he was going to overcome the problem of, the, um, of his own ageing. He wanted to ensure that he could be similar 
to the robot or that the robot could be similar to him. So he weighed up the different options, considered the cost of different solutions, and it turned out that the cheapest thing would actually be to do up, up his own face with cosmetic surgery as opposed to changing the face of the robot. And this is indeed what he has done, and this professor now has a face bloated with Botox in order to look like a robot. Secondly, um, in terms of problems that arise with uh, or issues that have to be considered with robots, Edu is the first to admit that these robots uh, do not actually allow you to feel that you're in the presence of another human being. They may look eerily similar to a person, but it is very difficult to recreate the feel of the presence of someone else. So ladies and gentlemen, we're seeing great steps forward in science and technology, but will robots ever be able to replace human beings? Will they ever become more intelligent than us? Will they do achieve many of the things that science fiction may lead us to believe? Well, I have to say that although it was great meeting up with Edu and hearing all the wonderful stories he had to tell about his work, I have to admit that I am a little scared of what the future may bring in terms of robot technology. We'll see how things develop in the future. Thank you.